Welcome. This is what's happening on the sun today, 3rd of April 2011. Well, we've had some excitement. After 48 hours of very quiet solar conditions, we've had a very sudden increase in the X-ray background from B3 up to C1 level. That's a tripling of the X-ray output of the sun. Now this is either an increase in the background due to growth of a new region or a very long duration flare. And I think it's actually a combination of the two as you will see as we go along. Let's first see what's happening to the sunspot groups. Only the trailing spot of region 1176 is visible on the sun, the leading the area having rotated over the west limb. 1180 remains stable. 1183 seems to be decaying slightly, but the good news is, is that the region 1184, that all but disappeared yesterday, has made a roaring return and we have quite a decent sized region there now. There is just a hint of a couple of spots in the region that is rotating over the east limb at the moment, but we'll have to wait for a day or two for the region to rotate further onto the disk before we can confirm whether the spots are really there or not. You can see the development of region 1184 in both the Sunspot movie and the Magnetic movie. Just keep an eye on the area to the east of region 1183 and you'll see this new Sunspot region grow very rapidly. The reason why I think the X-ray background is increasing due to a long duration flare can be seen in the Helium 2 movie. There's a large eruption from the remnants of region 1176, so I think there's renewed growth there. This becomes more plain when you look at the coronal images. There is obviously a large flare going on there just as the movie ends. Unfortunately we do not have any data from the SOHO chronograph, but fortunately we do have some data from the chronographs on board the two stereo spacecraft. Here are five repeats of the images from the Stereo A spacecraft showing this magnificent CME. Earth in these images is off to the left. Isn't that absolutely wonderful? If the SOHO chronograph data become available later today, I'll post a quick supplemental video to show what's going on there. It should be spectacular, so keep an eye out for that. If we look at the whole Sun from the point of view of both Stereo Spacecraft and the Solar Dynamics Observatory, we see that we have a, quite a few regions on the disk at the moment, but there are a couple that are due to come on in the next few days. The most important thing is that region 1184 is growing, so we can expect some excitement from that if that growth continues at the rate that it has been. The auroral arc remains unsettled as it was yesterday, with a KP index of between 3 and 4. The result is that we have some more spectacular images of Aurora from spaceweather.com. Here's just a couple of them. Aren't they absolutely beautiful? Science can be artistic as well. Here's the KP index, which is a measure of the activity of the Aurora arc, and you can see it's been basically varying between 3 and 4. So in summary, the sunspot number remains low at 66, but I suspect that that will increase over the next day or two. The X-ray background is increased to C1. The radio emissions from the sun have remained fairly constant at just over 100 solar flux units. Solar wind speed is still quite high at 570 kilometers per second, and the KP index, as I mentioned, has been varying between 3 and 4. What's the forecast? Well, I expect that solar activity will be moderate. There's an increasing, but still a fairly low chance of a major X-flare. If region 1184 continues to grow at the current rate, that chance will increase significantly. While we remain in a high-speed stream of the solar wind, we will continue to get aurora like the ones I've been showing you. The chance of a geomagnetic storm, at least in the next day or so, is unlikely, but with that large coronal mass ejection going off the west limb, we may be brushed by the edge of that in the next couple of days or so. So that's it for today, keep safe, bye for now.